طبعا احنا بدانا متاخر قليلا فما ادري اذا يعطونا اشاره المنظمين كم وقت متاح اذا ما استلمنا اشاره هنفترض ان هنعطي سؤالين للدكتور كاكو 10 دقائق ممتاز سؤالين للدكتور كاكو سؤالين للاستاذ عبد الرحمن طرابزوني في جتني عمليه تسل يعني تسلل باسئله جتني مباشره كذا استعدادا فهناخذ سؤال اول شيء من الجمهور وبعدين نحاول نشوف متى موعد الاسئله اللي جتني بالواسطه طيب السؤال يكون سؤال طبعا في فرق بين السؤال والراي والسؤال ومو لازم شكر مو لازم عطنا السؤال بسرعه اوكي واسمحوا لي اذا اضطريت اوقف احد استرسل في الراي دون السؤال يعطيكم أه. العافيه أه. عماد العقيل من الكويت أه. السؤال أه. حقيقه اللي طرح الدكتور بخصوص أه. التقنيه وكيف تتحول التقنيه هناك تخوف عن السوشيال ريليشن شيب بين ذا هيومن بين هذا التخوف اللي موجود انا يعني اتساءل فقط شكرا دكتور كاكو ايش ذا ريبيت ذا كويستشن يس تكنولوجي از ا سورد اند ات ديبندز اون هو كنترولز ذا سورد ون سايد اوف ذا سورد كان كات اجينست ديزيز بوفرتي ايلنس The other side of the sword can cut against people. So what's important is that the people control the sword. In other words, we want to have inputs, democratic inputs from many people. Now, some people say that technology also creates rich and poor. For example, oh, about 10 years ago, people talked about the digital divide. People thought that only rich people would have <clears throat> laptops, tablets, computers. And poor people would have pencils and paper. So there would be a digital divide. Wrong. That didn't factor in Moore's law, the fact that computers get cheaper every year. And who uses the computer today? Children. Children are one of the driving forces of computer technology. And so people didn't realize that mass production Uh, better shipping, containerization, uh, and Moore's law will drive down the cost of these technologies. And so technology, in some sense, is a leveler of inequality rather than a creator of inequality. Now, at first, things are expensive. That's a given. But with time, because of mass production, Moore's law, prices are dropping. So nobody talks about the digital divide anymore. Because we know that even poor families are being wired up. طيب نخلي التحية للجميع إن شاء الله في آخر الحوار. بما أن هذا علاقة بمورسلو اسمحوا لي السؤال اللي جاني هنا بالعربي بالعربي بعدين بيترجم ما الأساس الذي يعتمد عليه مورسلو؟ What are the bases that مورسلو is built on? I mean, how did it come to be like that? Moore's law simply says that computer power doubles every 18 months, and that has changed everything. And the reason for that is simple physics. For example, if you want to make a t-shirt, how do you make a t-shirt? You get, first of all, a template, a template, and then you spray paint. You spray paint through the template, and that's how you make the t-shirts that you buy at the store. In the same way, instead of using paint, we use ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation goes through a template. And that template then allows you to very fine tune the ultraviolet radiation on silicon. So instead of a t-shirt, we use silicon. Instead of paint, we use ultraviolet radiation. So this works great until you hit the wavelength of ultraviolet radiation. At that point, there is a limit And that limit we are gradually reaching now. So Moore's law cannot last forever. Some people say that if Moore's law were to keep on going, machines will be smarter than humans very soon. I don't think so. Because of the fact that ultraviolet radiation only has a wavelength that puts a limit on how small you can make a transistor. So eventually, we have to abandon the t-shirt model 
and go to more advanced forms like molecular transistors or quantum computers or atomic computers. But anyway, that's why Moore's law works, because we use light, radiation of light, to make t-shirts or templates of smaller and smaller size. Thank you very much. say that. No, uh, this question is by uh, Abdurrahman Al-Qadi. He's a student in King's Odd University. Uh, the question is uh, talking about digitalization process and automation. Uh, don't you think that they will make our uh, world more uh, materialistic than it already is? And how is it um, going to be um, at that age? Uh, also, how to uh, overcome this drawback? Thank you. So the question is, is the coping with the technology and the advancement yes. and the increase we'll, we'll of rate of automation. More inferior. It could make humans more inferior. More, more inf humans yes. become more inferior to machine and the world become materialistic? Oh, I mean, once machines replace many human jobs? Well, yes. Even yes. before that, once they keep advancing, yeah, they replace human jobs, they make things faster. Okay, well, the jobs that are being replaced now are repetitive jobs, jobs that are done repeatedly over and over again. Jobs that require pattern recognition. Computers are very bad at that. Computers can see, they don't understand what they are seeing. Computers can hear quite well. They don't understand what they are hearing. So jobs that are non-repetitive, but blue collar will survive. In other words, gardeners, policemen, construction workers, sanitation workers. These jobs cannot be replaced by robots easily because they involve pattern recognition. The other kind of job that is very difficult to replace involve common sense. We know that water is wet. We know that mothers are older than their daughters. We know that string can pull, strings cannot push. We know that sticks can push, sticks cannot pull. But how did you know that? How did you know that water is wet? How did you know that? Because you've touched water, you've seen string, you've seen mothers. Mothers are older than their daughters. Robots have not. Robots do not have common sense. And so far, even our most powerful robots do not have the common sense of a five-year-old child. And so these are the two reasons why robots are not gonna take over the earth anytime soon, because they don't look very well, they cannot recognize what they are looking at very well, and because there are so many rules of common sense that children understand, but robots do not. Therefore, the jobs of the future will, jo will involve intellectual capital. For example, think of a stockbroker. Stockbrokers today no longer sell stock. Now that sounds stupid. Stockbrokers sell stock. No. Stockbrokers no longer sell stock. You buy stocks on the computer. So what do stockbrokers sell? They sell intellectual capital. That is experience, know-how, imagination, the inside story, innovation. That's what stockbrokers sell now. So if you want a job being a middleman, the only way you will survive is if you add intellectual capital to your job, otherwise your job will go out the window. But it does mean that jobs involving science, jobs involving art will survive because robots are not creative. Robots cannot create science. Robots cannot create a joke. They cannot write a novel. And so the jobs that involve intellectual capital will gradually replace jobs involving commodity capital. Thank you very much. I think we're up for the last question. Um, go on the back here. Fadal. Sorry, sorry. 
Uh, okay, the, my question is for Professor Kaku. Uh, my question is, uh, you say in the future there might be uh, time travel. How is that going to be uh, while Dr. Albert Einstein said that the only way to go back in time is to be faster than light? Well, actually, he said it's impossible for an object to be as fast as light. Yeah, there are several ways to go in time. If you use Einstein's special theory of relativity, you cannot go backwards in time. But in 1915, Einstein came out with a more powerful theory, general relativity. And in general relativity, time travel is possible. Einstein himself realized that if the universe, for example, were rotating, then in a rotating universe, if you go around the universe, you come back before you left. So in other words, you go backwards in time simply by going in a circle. Since that time, we have found hundreds of solutions of Einstein's equations which allow for time travel. So what's the catch? The catch is if you calculate the energy necessary to go backwards in time, it is comparable to a black hole. So you would have to have the power of a star before you could go backwards in time in a time machine. So we physicists do think that a time machine might be possible, but the energy necessary to create it is, is fantastic. It's the energy of a star. Then the question is, what happens if you go backwards in time, meet your parents before you are born, and your mother falls in love with you? If your mother falls in love with you before you are born, then you cannot exist. How can you exist if, if your teenage mother just fell in love with you? The answer is the quantum theory. At that point, the universe splits in half. In one timeline, your mother did not marry your father. In one timeline, your mother fell in love with you. However, your timeline does not change. The river of time splits in half. Therefore, there are no paradoxes in time travel stories. If your mother fell in love with you before you were born, that's not really your mother. Looks like your mother, talks like your mother, had the same genes as your mother, but it's your mother in a different timeline. So we use the quantum theory to resolve paradoxes in time travel. I am, I am very happy to travel to Boston and not travel in time. I'm very happy where I am right now. So thank you on behalf of the audience and the organizers. Um, it was a delight to uh, coordinate this session and uh, please help me um, thank Dr. Kaku and, Dr. and Mr. Trabzoni with a great loud applause for their great presentation. Thank you. إلى أن أدعو الآن سعادة الدكتور عادل القعيد نائب الأمين العام لمؤسسة الملك عبد العزيز ورجاله للموهبة والإبداع من أجل تكريم المتحدثين ورئيس الجلسة. إذا نبدأ بالبروفيسور ميتشيو كاكو. والمهندس عبد الرحمن إسماعيل طربزوني ورئيس الجلسة مشكورا المهندس عمر مدني
اذا ايها الحضور الكرام نذكركم بضروره تعبئه استماره التقييم الالكترونيه من خلال مسح الكيو ار كود الموجود في البطاقات على مقاعدكم اذا كما نذكركم بالجلسه الثانية من جلسات هذا اليوم الثاني لهذا الملتقى في تمام الساعة السابعة والنصف مساء ندعوكم للحضور في تمام الساعة السابعة والنصف مساء من أجل جلسة يرأسها الأستاذ جهاد العمار ويتحدث فيها الدكتور أندرو هاول والدكتور ستيفن جايكوبس شكرا لكم